having a baby should be a normal, healthy, joyous, physiological process. It shouldn't result in death. We have to find ways to reduce maternal mortality from postpartum hemorrhage. Tranexamic acid is a drug that stops blood clots breaking down. It was known to reduce bleeding and widely used for minor bleeding and it wasn't used for the bleeding that can cause death. There was no commercial interest in evaluating it. People just overlooked it completely. It reduced the risk of bleeding to death by a third in trauma patients. And I thought, my goodness, this stuff really works. It's an effective drug, it's safe, easy to use. And as an emergency doctor, I, I don't want any more, it's, it's, it's enough. When we started the woman trial, we didn't know what effect tranexamic acid would have on the risk of bleeding to death after PPH, but after knowing it reduced the risk of bleeding to death after trauma patients, there was every reason to hope for benefit. But we had to prove that. We had to randomize 20,000 women and find out if it does. I started tracing back tranexamic acid. I wanted to know who actually invented it. With my wife's help, we traced this origin of this drug back to this husband and wife research team, Shosuke and Utako Okamoto. They lived in Kobe in Japan. The husband had died before we started investigating, but the wife, we discovered, was still alive. There was nothing at all written about their invention of tranexamic acid. So if we wanted to know anything, we just had to go and find out for ourselves. she came into the room, I was very surprised that she was tiny and looked so fragile. But once she started speaking, her eyes started shining and I could tell that she's got full of curiosity and she loves her research so much. At school, she was a very bright girl, always top of the class. After a while, she met Shosuke, her husband and they quickly became in love with each other. After the war, her research laboratory, everything was destroyed because of the bomb. So she just lost everything. But she still didn't give up. They decided if they need blood, they can use their own. I think that's part of the reason why they worked on the blood. After she had a child, it was very difficult. She just thought how she make it possible to be able to do both work and children. <laughs> I think one of the initial objective or um, motivation that they had for their research is to be able to make a drug that saves a lot of people's lives. You hear people talking about, I want to be famous, I want promotion at my university. To show gratitude to humanity in post World War II, Japan, they just had two nuclear bombs dropped on them. What a heart to get that response. It was something special. It's a very male-dominated culture of research in Japan. She did face discrimination and sexism, but she just ignored it and got on with it. 
When I told Utako about the woman trial, she said, it's going to work. <laughs> I think she knew what we were going to find. She is an inspirational figure. She was working in a laboratory that she'd set up in her own home, but doing world-class research. She was very inspiring, not only as a doctor, not only as a researcher, but just as a human being. To talk with her, to hear her story, was one of the most inspiring things that happened in my life. <laughs>